Obamacare just had a day so bad that the PricewaterhouseCoopers accountant who handed out the wrong best picture envelope checked in from the Alaska wilderness to send the troubled law condolence card. I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle <laughs> and Scott Ott, and this is the right angle on that cascading train wreck known as Obamacare, brought to wow. you by the PEG members of BillWhittle.com. All right, gents, I've been covering this law since it was a wee bill back in 2009, from its illegal creation to its mangled rollout to its unaffordable deductibles and copays. But this week, Monday, was Obamacare's worst day ever. Scott, I'm going to give you the first pair of stories. The Manhattan Institute's Orrin Cass published a report on Monday concluding Obamacare has not saved American lives and that the law's stated goal of increasing access to private insurance has actually caused a drop. That is, without the law, there would be more than a quarter million more people with private health insurance today. And of course, we can't forget those tens of millions more who lost their plans and their doctors because of Obamacare. And to add insult to injury, another report indicates that the one Obamacare success story, that's the Medicaid expansion, well, 75% of those who signed up for expanded Medicaid coverage were already eligible before the expansion. So Obamacare turned out to be little more than a wrecking ball aimed at private insurance and a multi-billion dollar ad campaign, easily the most expensive in history, to get people on an existing welfare program. So Scott, given all that, why the hell isn't there a repeal bill, just like the one Congress passed in 2015? Why isn't that repeal bill on, President's Trump, on President Trump's desk right now? Um, we've talked about this many times. I'll get to that in a second. Um, it's a, in a word, cowardice. Uh, but anyway, right. the, um, <laughs> the, the b- more of that study that, that Oren uh, Cass was talking yeah. about, which, uh, which got published in um, National Review and then linked elsewhere, um, is the, the idea that, w- you know, Obamacare was pushed with the idea that everybody should have health insurance. But the, what this study or multiple studies have looked at is, Are the people who got the benefits of Obamacare, the people for whom it worked, are they better off? Are they in better health? And what they found was even those who got moved on to Medicare were no better off than the control group of people who didn't. And so they, you know, there's no bet, there's no evidence that it improved the actual lives of people other than giving them a piece of paper or an email that says you now have health insurance coverage. The problem with this and, and the reason why uh, Bernie Sanders uh, was mocking President Trump the other day, basically saying, you know, Trump tweeted out something about how healthcare turned out to be more complicated than anybody knew, as if he's making excuses for his Republican uh, majority in Congress. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders kind of mocked him. Yeah, it's complicated. When, anytime you want to provide health insurance for 320 million people, it's complicated. Bernie You've hit the nail on the head. That's why we should not try to provide health insurance for 320 well million done. people. Because it is not something that can be done at a national level. There are too many variables. There are too many individual needs. And at the very least, if government's involved at all, it should be pushed down as close to the individual as possible, as far away from Washington, D.C. as possible. And because there are too many conflicting interests, too many political payoffs, too much opportunity for corruption, and frankly, too much ignorance, and as Bill constantly points out, to, uh, the, the single point of failure theory, when you have one national policy that essentially applies to everybody, opens everybody up to a devastating loss. All of those reasons, thank you, Bernie Sanders, for illustrating this, says, let's not have a national policy with regard to this. Let's push this down as close to the, to the state level as possible. Now, why aren't Republicans um, advancing this? As I've said before, when Republicans are in the minority, they're bold as lions. When they become the majority, they are timid as field mice. Now, Bill, I chose the next two stories just for you. Uh, First, would you like to know just how popular Obamacare is? I I, I don't mean the latest poll numbers. I mean actual metrics collected online. Digital expert Michael Brown spoke to Cheryl Atkinson because he'd found that 60% of all social media defenses of Obamacare were posted by just 100 accounts all during business hours. In other words, paid posters. Imagine that. 100 accounts, 60% total astroturf. Don't say Barack Obama never created any jobs, Steve. (laughs) There's 100 of them right there. Uh, Second, Bill, would you like to know just how successful Obamacare is? Your home state, California, also home to 30% of America's welfare cases. Just, Just the kind of place that loves big programs like Obamacare. Well, Californians are so disappointed that politicians and so-called health care advocates are pushing for single 
payer. Now, California, as you know, is already one of the most highly taxed states in the country, but taxes might have to double to pay for single payer if similar plans already rejected by Colorado and Vermont are any guide to how much this thing would cost. So, Bill, this is where you rant. Well, people have often asked me what it would take to move to Texas and uh, paying a go. state income tax of 9% and putting that up to 20%, 22%, that pretty much do it for me. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, where do you start with, with the things that are wrong with this, Steve? Um, I, I'm just going to come back to this uh, example I've used before, and that is that these Democrats like Pelosi and Obama and all the rest have a much higher opinion of my car than they do of me. I have three choices. My car has hundreds of choices. My car is smart enough to know what kind of deductible it wants, and my car is able to figure out how many payments it wants to make over the year, and my car is able to determine where it can be treated and where it can get fixed and all the rest, but I'm too stupid for any of that. When you have a policy where the, where the deductible, these new Obamacare deductibles, where the deductible is six dollars $7,000, you now need an insurance policy to cover your deductible on your other insurance policy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, one, the one law that, that Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch can not simply choose not to enforce, well, it's a few, gravity, thermodynamics, and, um, and uh, economics. It's, it's a thermodynamic problem. Things run down. Everything gets more simple. Temperatures tend to equalize. Healthcare is a, is a very complex problem. It's, it simply can't be solved on, on the central level, as, as Scott pointed out. If we would simply get competition back into this, we would then be in the situation we are with cell phones. And that would be we would constantly be seeing better plans for less money. Efficiency, which is now horrific, would go straight up. And we know that we can achieve a, a cost reductions of a factor of 10 because there are many more doctors now turning to this kind of um, concierge uh, medicine where they say, look, this, this procedure is a $3,000 procedure, but if you pay us cash, we'll do it for $350. Uh, MRIs are billed for six, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. There are imaging centers now, you pay them cash, it's $300. So the, the cost savings are there. It's just this giant wad of red tape has got to go. And Steve, let me let me just briefly say that yeah. I, as a non-resident of California, am all for California going to single payer. I want the Federalist experiment to flourish. I want people to see the utter failure that single payer will be in California. I'm sorry, Bill, you can come to Texas, but I want it to flop big time and big league. And it's the only way to, to, for people to real, realize what a disaster it is, is to see it in play. Here's why oh. you don't want here's why you don't want that to happen because it's already happening at the tax rate we've got and the problem is Californians go to Texas because there's no taxes and no regulations and the first thing they do is they start voting for more taxes oh, and more yeah. regulations. Good point. Never mind. You put up that put up that barrier wall man just just put it right right there on the uh, on the you know Right the outskirts of Fort Worth. I, I, yeah, I'm proud of you, Scott. I've, I've never heard of federalism uh, defined with 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 such cruel glee. It was it was beautiful. <laughs> Uh, folks, Obamacare was sold on lies, and now it isn't saving money. It isn't saving lives. Insurers are pulling out faster than a teenage boy without a condom, and yet it oh, still man. can't be repealed, and it still isn't quite big and expensive and stupid enough for California. But we have a word for that kind of thing. Just one word can describe that magnitude and total and abject failure. And that word is Democrats. And that's Right Angle and Obamacare's Worst Day Ever, brought to you by the paying members of BillWhittle.com. If you like what you see, click over, become a member yourself, help us get the truth out, won't you? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.